Morning, Rich. Morning, Mom. What the hell? You're outside. Where are you? I'm having my Boxing Day walk. Awesome. Hey, that's great. You're on your phone. You're doing this on your phone. That's amazing. Good for you. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. The mountains are behind me. Can you see yeah. that? Talk again. No, actually. Tell us where you are. I'm in the. Um, it's a place called uh, Stranzant, and uh, I'm just outside the uh, Nocticara kind of uh, mountain range, or it's also called Ventra, but uh, it's two mountain ranges. I don't know if you can see them or not. Yes. Maureen, thank you. Oh, you like that? For Thanks for the yeah, I'm so, I'm going to continue, wake but... up in Ireland. Yes. <laughs> well, I just want to wish you all a very happy uh, Christmas season and a happy new year, but I don't this, I talked to you before. And I'm just going to continue on my walk. And every now and then I'll pop up if I see a, a really interesting scene, okay? Absolutely. <laughs> and Gadir just joined us from Morocco. Maureen, just chat for a second. I'm going to make sure she's walking through Ireland right now, dear. What's the yeah, she's going for her, her daily, her daily it's walk. What's the temperature, Mama? About twelve. I see it's about ten degrees. Well, let me Not look bad. at my phone. Well, Maureen, for all the plus ten you are, it's minus eight here. Oh my God! <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm very, very lucky. But it is absolutely spectacularly beautiful out here. So we're really excited. Good. And it's Boxing Day, December 26th. And we're just excited here at Atlantic Canada East to have a little bit of a conversation today. We do have a few recipes to share because I couldn't help myself last night. I, had, I received a few little gifts and um, some food related things and I needed to cook. So I'm also talking a little bit about some traditions in Atlantic Canada as in other countries. And I'm gonna invite Jacqueline in to come in and share a little bit about the really great experience her and her family have been having as their first Christmas here in Atlantic Canada and in Nova Scotia. And I can tell you that um, we're so pleased with all of our guests that come in from around the world. And Jacqueline tells such a great story and our beautiful family in and around the Lunenburg County where they live have definitely made sure that the welcome mat, as we say, is definitely been open here in Atlantic Canada. And um, it's beautiful to see them embracing new traditions here. And I know Christine is joining us from Vietnam this morning. I'm sure you're enjoying the Facebook post to see because she's going to be hopefully in Canada this time next year. Maybe we'll be having her first Christmas experiencing these things. And I know that you didn't get the white snow I'll show you the picture here. Here in New Brunswick, we definitely still have some snow. And um, so that's always beautiful. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the fun things. So usually this episode is leftovers. Originally, we were going to run a little bit of a video. I do have some clips from this year. I am going to share with everybody here in a few minutes. Uh, just some highlights of, of the wonderful things, I, I must say, having the opportunity to go through all the pictures from the year, first of all, I was hungry <laughs> when I finished that, but it was been quite a journey, and we're so pleased that so many of you have, have been through most of it with us, and we're very excited about 2022 and the continued journey that that's going to be. So one of the things we do is we cook a turkey dinner, is a very, very traditional thing in Atlanta, kind of quite traditional in North America. And um, we, we definitely did, my mother and I, and um, I'll tell you a little bit in a few minutes how I seasoned it. But I've got some leftovers here, and I think some of those nice things, and you're going to see, oh, let me move my celery that I just picked off my celery plant. And by the way, that natural light you're seeing coming in is the sunshine, so it is definitely nice and sunny here. But, um, and as you'll see, we've got some roasted onions over here. I'm going to use my celery as a pointer. Um, there's a, one of the, the chicken, the chicken wings, the chicken wing off the turkey. That'd be 
in the equipment, the turkey wing. And then I've got some beautiful white breast meat. And I don't know if you can see, but there's a lot of spices and seasoning. And one of the things that I did is I made a rub of herbs and then I put it underneath the skin of the bird when I bake it. So it's all baked underneath and it really gives extra flavor to the meat. So I'm gonna dice that up today and I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of mayonnaise and some celery. And then of course, my favorite farmer, Angela, she has a lot of leeks this year. So I've got some nice diced up leeks that are gonna go into that and a few almonds. And I'm gonna use that for some chicken salad that I'm gonna have this afternoon. The other thing is I have leftover potatoes. So one of the things I like to have for breakfast, we call it hash, where you'll take fried mashed potatoes or your mashed potatoes from yesterday and mine are in my container. And I'm gonna use some onions and I'm gonna put them in a frying pan with some olive oil and I'm gonna crisp those up with my eggs this morning. Then I have some fried potatoes. So great ways to take your leftovers and have them into a fresh new meal the next day. So that's one of the things. And I also made some fresh almond milk yesterday. And out of that, there's a byproduct of the extra skins and I made some crackers. So I'm gonna talk about those. And then probably a new favorite recipe, who likes coconut? Coconut fans in the house? Three Hi, ingredients only. Richard, three ingredients in this recipe. Coconut. <laughs> and I have made these beautiful <coughs> coconut cookies. Joan, I was, and look, it's just like a nice fresh shortbread. Wonderful. And could not believe that there was only three ingredients. So I did make them last night. I could do another batch because they don't take much time. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how easy these cookies are to make. And I'm really excited about that because one thing I'm going to do to them today, while you while you're with me, is I'm going to dip them in chocolate. So behind me, I'm going to get my chocolate going. So I'm really taking some of the things I've already cooked and just changing them a little bit today and, and making those leftovers, as we usually call them, into fresh new recipes that you can enjoy the next day. And that's one of the things I love about making a big meal. And these Brussels sprouts are dedicated to Jacqueline and Phyllis because when they first arrived in Canada, I had brought some Brussels sprouts down. And Little did I know at the time that they had not had a chance to have a fresh Brussels sprout before. They had had them um, definitely cooked in other ways, but to have an opportunity to have these wonderful Brussels sprouts and we bake them up and they thoroughly enjoyed them. And I think they eat a lot more Brussels sprouts in Canada now than they did before. So those are a lovely addition. And of course, we're going to talk a little bit about some spicy maple carrots that I made yesterday. As soon as you open the lid, you can stop. So that's a little bit of what's going on in my kitchen. So we're going to take a little bit of time. Jacqueline, I want to maybe go over to you and, and tell us a little bit about what you have been doing over the last couple of days. Maybe share some of the recipes that your family's been enjoying, both traditional from home, maybe a couple of new ones that you have tried here in Canada. And Richard, we want to hear the good eats at your family table after. Uh, thank you, Misha. Mm, good morning, everyone. So happy to see you again today, special occasion. Um, this is the first time we've been here and enjoyed uh, Christmas Day. So happy, uh, as I mentioned, uh, with Michelle before. Outside, it is cold, but we are so warm. Uh, we receive a lot of um, love, care from people around us, from uh, our colleagues, from our neighbors and our friends. And uh, yesterday, we invited um, our Vietnamese uh, 
frame a whole family with four people to be here with us. And uh, we cook some uh, Vietnamese cuisine and uh, maybe some kind of uh, 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 a mixture of Vietnamese and uh, Western uh, cuisine. Uh, first, we um, we make hot pork. Have you ever heard of hot pork? It, it is a kind of soup uh, in which we put uh, vegetables, salmon, uh, lambs, mushrooms, and it is very delicious. Mm, I hope uh, one day I will uh, share with you this recipe. And uh, I made air fried chicken wings again, our favorite, our favorite. And um, the the last thing, uh, let me see, what is it? Ah, pizza. Yes, my homemade pizza, uh, beef and chicken. And again, the kids love it very much. And uh, yesterday, uh, we had a wonderful time with friends. We ate, we uh, chatted. Uh, talk with each other, we play uh, some games uh, with the kids. And then because the weather was uh, wonderful, so we took a walk along the beach, collected some stones. And they stayed with us until nine. I'm uh, sorry, <laughs> five. Uh, it was dark at the time and uh, they, they had to uh, come back home. Uh, in short, we enjoyed Christmas, the first Christmas here with warm, warm um, atmosphere. Yeah, that's it. And um, um, I'm sorry, today I um, I haven't prepared any clips to uh, to share with you today. But uh, Michelle, um, I want to say uh, thank you to you uh, because um, you are an experienced person. You are the person who had the idea to um, to have this club, and from the time I joined this club, I am aware. I, I had the awareness of um, making some healthy food to uh, for my family, of course, and to share with people. And uh, I hope um, with the recipes we we have. We help people uh, to be more healthy and work better. <laughs> okay. So, uh, and again, thank you everyone for joining us every week and happy holidays. Okay. Back to you, Michelle. Oh, hello, Helen. Good morning. Merry morning, everyone. You know, Jacqueline, thank you so much. And you know, it's because of you very much so. She was in Vietnam and it was an opportunity and a time of day that we could spend together. And then we invited the world in. And then each one of you have become part of our family on Sundays. And people often ask, you know, is that a lot of work? Or, and I said, well, we're eating anyways. And we love spending the time together. And I said, it's no different than you go see a friend for a coffee every Tuesday afternoon. But, you know, it's your food family that we're enjoying, that we've come together with. And um, to your point, Jacqueline, our, our goal was always to help bring the world closer to us here in Atlantic Canada, but hopefully to bring more people closer to their family into food and to remember that it's really part of all of our learning. And I know, as we say, from our kitchens to yours each week, we hope that people um, cook some of the dishes while they're in Morocco or wherever it is that they are and feel like they're going to have a little bit of a taste of here before they have the opportunity to arrive. And food brings everybody together. So this is such a gift for us to have this. And I know Joan, my mom's best friend for a lot of years, and, you know, we enjoy getting to see different people and, and Richard, you and your mom every week and to know that she's in Ireland and you're in Nova Scotia. Very funny because over the last year and a half, you switched countries. <laughs> but it's, uh, you know, it's a wonderful piece. And, and Christina, um, one of Jacqueline's great friends, uh, you know, she's working on her journey to arrive in Canada. 
And hopefully this has helped you prior to arriving to know a lot more about what's going on. And I know with dear, as we work with you in your journey, you'll know more about what when you arrive and you go for job interviews and you talk with people and you have reference points and and you'll know that when you talk about dark sheet maple syrup we know that we're talking about angela or you know we can talk about all of our wonderful urban joy or, or scott's buffalo sauces which we will finally get a chance for you to try so for those reasons mom you want to just stir in this i've got my i, I have my side cook with me now we're putting the potatoes and the leeks together. That's our breakfast. And to let you know, we've got chocolate melting behind us. So there's different things going on. But it's really about breaking bread. Uh, we're excited about this coming year. We want to know what you want to know. That's really important to us. If there's dishes you would like to see us cook, if there's themes you would like to hear us talk about, we definitely want to hear more about that. I know Richard and I. We'll get our calendars out every few weeks and, and have some laughs and look at what are the official days that leftover day coming up. And uh, but we definitely want to continue this year to do inspired dishes. Richard, I know that um, I really like the picture that you've got. It looks fantastic. Um, but I think you're I mean, I know he's visiting his family, I believe in the Annapolis Valley, which is probably one of best eating places in Nova Scotia. It's a wonderful place where there's a lot of fruit and a lot of um, grapes, which I guess are fruit wineries and a lot of great things grow. Richard, did you want to send a couple of holiday wishes out? Yeah, I'm just going to, um, thanks everyone, obviously. Everything Jacqueline said, uh, ditto, you know, and um, I'm just going to see if I can show you something here. If I could share the screen, this was Christmas dinner for us here. Can you see that? So that was a yeah. split roast, uh, really fantastic, really fantastic. My aunt, my aunt Pat made it up. So we, we, you know, we, well, she, you know, she was obviously making the, the final decision because it's her own. <laughs> We were here for Thanksgiving. We had a big, huge Thanksgiving. It was fantastic, but she wanted to try something a little bit different. So we did that. And this is what the end result looked like here. Hang on a second. Uh, it was just gorgeous. And we watched the Grinch a couple of times. Oh, same picture came back up or no, no there it is. So this is Yorkshire. Pud it's a different one. Yeah. So this is Yorkshire pudding here. Um, this is the 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 roast beast, <laughs> roast beast, <laughs> which is uh, referred to several times in the Grinch. And uh, you know, before before Europeans came over to North America, there was no turkey at Christmas, so it was it was whatever kind of meat you could find, mostly a usually a duck of some sort, but also roast beast. And this over here, look, Michelle over here, to see this thing over here. Do you know what Love that it. is? Yeah, you know, Potato. it's called a castle bat. Mm -hmm. and it's a potato and you slice it up. You keep the bottom together and you slice it up in all these kind of like, like, like little potato chips and you pour garlic into that and uh, roast that <laughs> up. And it's just fantastic. Of course you pour garlic in so it. So I'm having that what one. What else you put in it? <laughs> of course you do. Um, but while we were here, I thought I'd just show. So Richard, let me ask you a question while you're getting your thing. Did you help make the Yorkshire pudding and have you ever made it before? No, I did not help. And I think it was, um, I think that part was, was kind of maybe sort of out of a box. <laughs> So, well, so. <laughs> keep going. I just, I want to make sure when we wrap up, I just want to talk a little bit about Yorkshire pudding because it's got an interesting name because it doesn't really come out looking like a pudding. So, Richard, I want you to put the Yorkshire pudding picture back up if you don't mind, please. Oh, sure, yeah. And the next time you're with anybody making those, Richard, 
definitely learn from them. I, I actually had to make them with about five or six people that knew what they were doing before I got it right. So do you see the little thing that looks like a donut? Yep. So that is made, and I'll tell you, do a Google video afterwards. But it is very simple because I believe it is, honestly, I think it's flour water with a little bit of salt is the only ingredient that's in the batter. Now you have to get the ratios right. But the really unique key to that is you need a muffin tin. Mom, would you grab me the muffin tin down there? You have to put your pan in the oven and heat your pan up with the oil already in the little tins to the maximum heat you can get it. Then you have to drop your dough in and put it immediately into the oven for the exact amount of time. And when they come out, they're really billowy and puffy. But this is such a great example. As soon as they pretty much get onto your plate and you're walking away with it, they'll start to deflate a little bit like a deflated balloon. But the light flavor and taste is great, but we just use a traditional pan, but you have to take this and put it in to the oven. And, and I'll tell you, I have, um, I've successfully made them twice. I've unsuccessfully made them about 10 times, but I, <laughs> I do know what I'm doing now. Thank you, mom. Keep going, Rich. Show us that last one that you had. Oh, the last one I had was actually just a collection of some of the, the pictures of, of things over the year. Oh, lovely. So I was just going to go. But this is a, I was just looking up Yorkshire pudding, some of the history of it. And um, look what I found. Hang on a second. I'm on a very small screen today. Give me, give me a second here. No chat. So here we go. I do have a little highlight reel I'm going to run here to show some of you some of our highlights from the year. Okay, so here, I just uh, put the history in there. So the history of the Yorkshire pudding uh, da, 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 comes from 1737, and it was listed as a dripping pudding, and the dripping comes from split roast meat. So that's that's quite something because we had it with the split roast, so there was the connection there. Yep. Very cool. Thanks, Richard, for sharing that. Looks yeah, like was, everybody to chime in a few minutes when I share our reels. But I'm going to show a little bit in this bowl. I'm going to put what I call my our turkey salad together. So those are leeks. I wanted onion flavor, but I didn't want it to be so powerful with onion and leek or green onion are wonderful substitutes for that. And now I've diced up my turkey and it's all in a nice small bite size. And then I diced up that beautiful stalk of celery that came off my celery plant. Don't trip over the celery. I just realized I left it on the floor. My poor mother was gonna end up tripping over. The doctor asked us what happened. She tripped over celery plant in the kitchen. That'll be something to explain anywhere. So this is, this is regular mayonnaise. I don't need to use a lot. So in the amount that I'm making, I'm gonna use about a tablespoon. And because there's all that nice herbs and seasoning on that chicken already, I'm just gonna stir that up with that little bit of the leek and then that beautiful celery that's in there. But of course, little cracked pepper everything's better with some fresh cracked pepper in my opinion and then the other thing that my mom and i like to do is i've just got a few almonds and i'm just gonna run yeah thank you mom run my knife through these so that they're just a thin slice if you if you would like you could buy the sliced almonds in your baking section at the store uh whatever works Sometimes I even roast the almonds a bit first if I've got raw. These are roasted already for me. So, and what I find that does is it gives a nice, well, nutty, but it gives a nice crunch and in through the um, recipe. 
So I'm just going to put a little tiny bit of, this is a caramelized onion salt from Infinity Farms. So there we go. So that's going to be my chicken salad. I'm probably going to do that on lettuce wraps today because um, as we know, I don't always eat a lot of bread, but I love putting it in to a nice lettuce wrap. So there's that beautiful turkey salad. You can do the same thing with chicken, any one of the pieces of it, but that'll be nice for sandwiches here coming up at lunch. So that's one of the nice things when you have a turkey or a chicken or a roast beet. Richard, I love that saying that always makes me giggle um, because you can <laughs> use those sandwiches and, and make sure that you continue to eat well. Turkey pie. That's a good one. My mom's behind me saying um, turkey pie, probably also up there with one of my favorites. And that's when often I will take the, all the cooked vegetables that I had from the day before and then put all of those together with your gravy, mix it up, put it in a pie crust. So, and that is a very popular way for us to reuse all of those leftovers. And really you're just using your gravy like your sauce. That's a really great one, Mom. Um, albeit the carrots that I did, like I've got the, whoo, those are spicy. I just took a really big photo of those. Um, the carrots, see my, I broke out the beautiful dish today. Stored in my plastic reusable containers. Um, but these are the beautiful roasted carrots. I have done them with carrots before. And I'm going to have a laugh because you have to see the size of the carrots. So I have a little pantry outside the door. This is where we get to see everything on December 26th. Look at the size of these carrots. Holy moly. I know. So it was $2.32 for three carrots. But you need to understand, one carrot will feed a family of four. They're Extremely large. So these were fun. I used those in the base of my gravy. You know what was interesting? Um, they're called maritime carrots, by the way. And when I went in and I had said to the, the farm stand, I was it was a meat market combination farm stand. We have to talk, there's many of those available here in Atlantic Canada. Uh, this particular one in Moncton called Old Time Meat Market, lovely place to visit it. And Jacqueline, it's very much similar to the one in Bridgewater that we go to. Okay. So there's a lot of the meat freezers and then, and I picked these up and I thought, I said to the girl, I said, what's going on with the carrots? <laughs> and she had said that there are several large restaurants. The, these were grown because a lot of specialty restaurants would use these larger carrots for different types of things. And due to some things that are happening with the pandemic, they're not having as many events and things. So there was a lot of these extra carrots. So they taste delicious, right, Mom? They're absolutely delicious and they don't take long to peel. So there's a lot of benefits to giant carrots, we've realized, because everything went faster in doing it. So I must say, Jacqueline, when I'm down in a couple of weeks, I'll revisit if they have more giant carrots at that price, I'll bring you and Richard some carrots down. And they could be used as a weapon if someone breaks into your house. There's a lot. Numchuck. You need it. To, I know the deers get a big laugh out of that one. Okay, now I'm just having fun. Those are good Christmas games to play, you know, where you pass things around. People have to guess what you would say to candidate. So, you know, we could play a game with everybody on here with Zoom. It's like, other than a carrot, look at the size of this. It could be a microphone. Right? Fun game to play. Could be a telephone. A pointer for the teacher, for the board. Three-dimensional carrot. There we go. We have a little carrot fun today. So I've got my potatoes all cleaned up. I should say my mother does. Thank you, Helen. Now, hopefully you can see, because she's got these cooked so perfectly. 
look at the crispy coating on that. So that was our leftover potatoes from supper, some leeks, and um, a little bit of celery and green peas. We're going to do a fried egg after, and that's going to be absolutely fantastic. So one of the other dishes that I talked to you about doing was these cookies. Well, I must say, these might be up in my new, a new favorite recipe. So this is how much the batch made, minus three. A little bit of quality control going on. Helen had one and I had two. So we were just making sure everything works really well. So I think they look absolutely beautiful. They look just like a, um, thank you, mom, a shortbread cookie. And I kind of made them in a format of a shortbread cookie, but you can turn them into whatever shape or whatever you would like. So these are really simple. So um, this is trying to bake a coconut flour. So it is a regular organic coconut flour. So nice fine grain in it. So in this recipe, really easy. One and one quarter cup of coconut flour. Okay, ingredient number two, one quarter of a cup of maple syrup. So whatever your favorite maple syrup is, and if, um, I know if it's not, this is the Angelo's dark sheep, as we know, love this one, get a rich maple, any maple syrup. I would have to say, if you're not able to get maple in your country for whatever reason, um, we need to work on that. But secondarily, I might try to find out um, to use like a light cane, cane syrup, uh, something that's not so sweet, right? Because maple syrup is is got a nice sweetness, but it's not as sweet as honey. Would that be fair to say, Jacqueline? Maple's not as sweet as honey. It's a bit different. So, but it is a liquid that you want to use. So a quarter of a cup. And then the other thing was a quarter of a cup of coconut oil. Now my coconut oil normally is solidified. So I just heated it up a little bit so that I liquefied the coconut oil. So quarter cup of coconut oil, quarter cup of maple syrup, one and one quarter cups of flour. That's it. I mix my oil and my maple together and then I poured them into the coconut flour and it very quickly formed into like a, a dough. And it was a little runny. I was a little concerned at first, I'm, I'm honestly, but it, I was able to form it into a dough. I used some plastic wrap and then I rolled it into, in a, into a roll, right? Oh, look, I rolled it into a roll about the size of this carrot. Perfect example. I'm not joking, actually, if I had to give you an example. If I cut the carrot right here, that's about how much dough I had. So about 10 inches and I, and I made them about that big. Look, I can't even make this up. Look at the size of the cookie and the size of the carrot. It was like I planned it and I didn't. So, um, and the cookies don't really shrink. So by the way, the same size I cut that cookie in, when I took it out of the oven, 325 degree oven, 14 minutes. That's it. That is how fast these were done. And they came out just rich and beautiful and they're and they break up really easily. So now I'm going to get my bowl to hot to touch. So you know what I did? I melted chocolate. Thank you, my mother who gave me a beautiful 78% dark cocoa chocolate bars in, for Christmas is now so now look how much better that cookie looks today so there they are dipped in oh did i have a part thank you mom i did have a part spin out so what i'm going to do and Roslyn doesn't even know this i am actually meeting Roslyn, who has her wonderful children visiting this afternoon we have a new student that just arrived from india and she's now going to be going to Crandall University starting in a week. So I'm going to bring her over a little welcome present today. 
and we're going to bring her over a couple of these wonderful cookies dipped in chocolate. So I thought that might be a nice welcome gift. We don't always get a chance to do that, but trust me, any of our students that we would, we've got our beautiful Nash down at St. of X. So if these students come in to St. of X, we can probably arrange things. Halifax isn't that far, but as you can see, all I did with this was simply, and I use a little metal bowl, and I'm gonna show you a very easy trick to melting chocolate that is safe. Um, some people do it in a microwave. Um, I don't always, I find I can't control it as much in the microwave. I also find sometimes when I microwave it, it goes hard really fast. I don't know, Jacqueline, if you've ever done that, it cools off quicker. Yeah, mom was saying that. I don't know what it is about. Um, but who wants a coconut cookie dipped in chocolate? Because this is a really great exercise, and I just realized how decadent it is. Because I'm dipping one in front of every one of you, and then putting them on the tray beside me. So um, this was a very inexpensive recipe to make. Very, very easy, Jacqueline. Something you even show the boys how to make that. Um, oh, thank you. My mom's giving me directions here, and I'm getting to the bottom of my tray. But I have a feeling we should make these for the school. You know what's really lovely is they're dairy free, they're gluten free, and actually they're sugar free. So we are hitting all, look at that, probably a tiny little bit of sugar. I think we filled our tray with these cookies. And I know coconut is also one of my mom's favorite. Joan would know this. They travel around the world, the two of them. I was trying to add up to how many countries they have been to, I think some, and it's a lot. Craig, yeah. So do you know what's really fun? I'm gonna put these out on my back deck. You know why? Because it's minus eight. And it's the closest refrigerator and it's nice and sunny out there. So there is all of our wonderful dips. Cookies. How, how nice do those look? So I'm going to give those to my mom. I think I might keep one. They're terrible. I shouldn't share them with anybody. Mom, my mother's like, make sure the birds don't come and get them. So I'm going to break that cookie open. And you see it is a little bit crumbly, but it's nice and soft on the inside. Absolutely spectacular. Such an easy recipe. I hope all of you take an opportunity over the holidays to make that. Once you put the roll in the refrigerator, I have to think. Jacqueline, what do you think of those? Unmute yourself and tell me when you're gonna make them. Yeah, I think it's easy to make. I'm sure I'll make it one day soon. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. I know she's a coconut fan and I needed to take a drink of my coffee that's now dripping down the front of my mouth. These are the small recipes that don't take long, but you took the opportunity. Now I'm going to lick the chocolate off my finger too. To enjoy those with friends and family. I love a recipe that feels like you did more work than it is. So when you put the, the giant carrot roll of your dough in the fridge, leave it for at least 30 minutes. So when it comes out, it's the, the recipe basically says it's gonna feel a little hard, like a brick of butter. So what should be happening, so we'll have a little chemistry lesson. The coconut oil that we liquefied is now solidifying in that. So I'm sure in other traditional recipes, butter would be used in place of that, but we're using the coconut oil to amp that up. Absolutely amazing. Hopefully that you will enjoy those. So I've got one other recipe I'm going to share again that's a fun and a fast recipe. And then I'm going to share a couple of pictures, but I certainly would like anybody to add any feedback any thoughts, any questions. I know Scott's not here. 
but we're going to give this next recipe a bit of an homage. So I've been making almond milk. I think we, we featured that on a previous episode. And um, so I took again, some raw almonds um, and a couple almonds. I soaked them overnight and then I ran it through my blender. And out comes two things. First of all, beautiful milk. But this is one that Scott had done. Mine's in the fridge. Scott flavored this. And what a spectacular, um, wonderful, dairy free again recipe to give. And R Richard, I think you'll really enjoy this one. So, the one thing that he did is when he blended it, he put some fresh nutmeg, some fresh cinnamon in it. So when he put the almond milk into the blender, he had really put and ground some of those fresh ingredients in it. And he did say that he put a tablespoon of maple syrup. And this is one of the most beautiful Christmas drinks I have ever had. And that is made all came from one cup of raw almonds, made a liter of what I just said to you, so I want to talk about how you can make an ingredient go a long way. So we have this beautiful drink that we have shared. I must also say it was, yeah, my mom, I love it, mom. And it's good with rum, she just said. It is beautifully mixed with rum if you want to have that little extra piece. I love that you brought that up and not me. My age, I can't. There you go, there you go. Way to own it, mom. So. And then the other thing that came out of that is, and, and I think I showed this last time, was when I strain it out, all of the leftover, um, I would say shells or the skins from the almonds. So believe it or not, I have a bowl and out of that, it still mesmerizes me. One cup of almonds, I ended up with two cups of this additional leaf from the leftover arm piece. So what I did is I made so here are beautiful almond crackers that I made out of the leftover pieces. So that would have been something we would have thrown in the garbage. But we don't want to do that. We want to be able to figure out how do we maximize and really work on some zero waste products. So the really simple thing that went into here with some nice garlic powder. I used Angelo's farmhouse blend seasoning, but I wanted some different seasoning in it. So I'll remind everybody that's in this. Everything's organic, but there's sea salt, onion powder, garlic. I guess they use garlic twice, so not surprising. Um, ground pepper, thyme, oregano, basil, and parsley. So if you don't have that, so just get a little bit of those dried ingredients. I did put a little bit of extra dried rosemary that I had fresh because I wanted a little bit more rosemary flavor. And the other thing, and I will post this afterwards, I put in some ground Parmesan cheese, really finely ground Parmesan. And the other thing I added was some flax seed, ground flax seed and ground chia seed. So first of all, they're so healthy. You see how close my refrigerator is. This is me leaning over, reaching into my refrigerator. <laughs> I just realized that the camera like. So this is what I had used just a ground flax seed. So I put some of those and some chia seed in. So that's where you get, I'm gonna hold one of the crackers up again really closely. And you can see the multigrains in it. See how nice that looks? Hopefully that'll get clear. So they hold together quite well. I wouldn't say it's a cracker that I would try to serve something on because it will probably crumble a bit, but it does break up really easily. The taste is rich, herbs, spices. You get a little bit of the Parmesan cheese. The only other thing you mix with that is some olive oil. So it's got the leftover almond skins which have been dried out because we took all the milk out of them. Salt, pepper, and whatever dried seasoning you want for whatever flavor you want your cracker to have. 
And then, like I said, olive oil and a little bit of that Parmesan cheese. I've made them without the Parmesan. They were very good. They're better with the Parmesan, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but what a beautiful zero waste product to be able to have there. And it's very, very delicious. And that made about the one cup, the leftover, if you had two cups, it made about 20 of crackers around this size. So very lovely to serve for a Boxing Day dinner or a treat or to have with anybody. Are you okay, Mom? Yeah. She just brought the cookies in that had been cooled in the outdoor refrigerator. See, a benefit of Atlantic Canada. So there we go. Now all of them, they're all ready. You can even see the edge where the, and that's how quickly those cooled down outside. So we will be enjoying these, and the parchment paper is really key, right? So that those stay on it. So, so it's, um, those are just a few of the recipes of a few highlights and a few fun things that we've had from the year. But the other thing I want to do, like there's some, got to pose with those cookies. Um, and I have my turkey salad, so we're all ready for that. I've got my fried potatoes. I'm going to fry an egg. So mom and I are going to have a little breakfast and enjoy our leftovers. And of course, one of the other favorite things that I had had was the cranberry, Scott's cranberry. And I must say, I've taken some of his. Oh, Richard, that looks good. What you making? And then I'm going to. Oh, that looks good. So I'm going to do a little screen share here. Hopefully I can get this to work. And I'm just going to play a couple highlights. Now, it's interesting when you say, know for a fact that we've had, well, this is week 73. So these are going back to some early ones. Let's see if I can make this advance. There was an early one in the year. We were making uh, simple, delicious, and local flavors. Why won't that advance? Oh, no. Wait, can I not Oh, there we go. That was an early one with lobster rolls, if you remember that. I'm not sure what Rod and her sister are up there. They've got something going on in their kitchen. We've got a few extra things and spices happening there. You can see everybody on. Oh, my mother gets some good shots, I must say. And there's the exciting Jacqueline. There's your big smiling face in the corner. Richard, I think you look like you have a little church rooting board or something going on. I know that was poutine week. Look what I have in my hands, everybody. That's a, a gravy with fresh Quebec curds. That was a really good episode. Oh, this was a fun one. This is when Angela delivered the basket. I don't know if some of you remember. Look, that was back in April. And Angela had delivered that basket. And if you remember, the Jack was smiling. She challenged me to be able to to be able to uh, make that and I made some really great ingredients those big eggs in there were a duck egg if anybody remembers that was one of the first episodes we had Collins and Paul and uh, we enjoyed some wonderful look at that lobster rolls yum oh there was a little bit of the seed growing from all the seeds that were starting and there's my garlic on the lower right I planted almost 100 bulbs this year so there will be lots of garlic in our future. Uh, there we go. Come on. We had to celebrate episode bacon because you know how much we enjoy that. And there is some of our stuff around chocolate. There's, I think that's a beautiful array now. So that's piece by chocolate piece. Chocolate stuff on the right hand corner from Antigonish. There, mom. Um, yeah. I could hear mom make the comment on that one. Those are beautiful. Of a beef up with some wonderful dip. Um, and I know that was actually done with a brown butter dip that the scallops went with. Oh, look, there's me enjoying the scallop. Apparently, they made it in there twice. Um, and now we're moving along a garlic. Well, I think, oh, we remember that garlic soup. It just made a repeat. So the first time we did that was in July. 
And then I just use that in my potato scallop. So here's some fun growing in my backyard. So these were some of the things that, and for everybody away, you know, when you're here in Atlantic Canada, you too can have these things growing in your backyard. So those are some acorn squash and then uh, working it way across the top. That's two different acorn squash. And then we have a zucchini and a pumpkin. And then down there, you'll see some, some more pumpkins through some artichokes and look at those wonderful tomatoes. So there's some of our summer favorites. Jacqueline, remember those beautiful crab that you had done up? Just some great favorites going on there. There was a big, there was one of our whole spicy recipes going out to Scott's on that one. Um, lots of things using that beautiful buffalo sauce we all love so much. This is wonderful. This was a trip. A Jacqueline did, and Richard, does it look familiar? That's at the Lunenburg Market. So that would have been one of our wonderful trips down through there. And I know Jacqueline and Richard have the prevalence. It goes on every Thursday morning in Lunenburg, Nova Scotia. So that's a wonderful tour through there. I, I have some of that jelly at the top and I love the ironworks. I have to go back to ironworks and get some of their maple cream. It's a wonderful, wonderful piece. So this was another highlight of our year that I thought deserved to mention. And we had such a beautiful opportunity to go and work with the Lunenburg Dock Fest and support and do a live cooking demonstration for one of the documentaries that was called Deserted and it's bringing awareness to the food deserts and helping people eating healthier. There's, you know, Philip Bang and Jacqueline and myself, Richard, Richard, we see how tall you are in that picture. Rosalind and Ty and, uh, and, and Ty's wife, Stephanie, had joined us that day. What a beautiful day we had in Lunenburg. And then, of course, who doesn't love pizza and beer? That was a really fantastic tour. So Rosalind and I really enjoyed ourselves at some of our favorite places. And here across Atlantic Canada, for those who aren't here and coming to visit, um, the craft beer market is really quite exciting. And there's a lot that are alcoholic, obviously, but there is also a lot of non-alcoholic versions. It's wonderful opportunities for you to try what's going on in our region. I think that looks like Christmas or Thanksgiving, but I'll tell you what it was. That's when I, it was Thanksgiving, because remember I made Thanksgiving pizza afterwards. So mom's sitting over there. And now who remembers this episode? That is a trombone, I'm gonna get it wrong, zucchini. Again, that's kind of up with the carrot. Oh, look at it, wearing the same shirt. There's a fun screenshot. <laughs> Something about big vegetables in Atlantic Canada. That's funny. All right, and just to wind down a lot of few pictures, and I definitely want anybody we are really excited in the month of November this year to work with the uh, Tourism Industry Association of New Brunswick. Jim, we did some highlights, some wonderful places we visited. And if you look in the lower left corner in that picture, there's the first time I made those crackers. So isn't that interesting? And that was a recipe from Chanel, one of the chefs in Bactouche. That was my famous meatloaf that everybody quite enjoyed. Um, I guess that made it in there twice. Some of the donuts that again running around New Brunswick. Uh, and that is actually Emily um, from Tourism New Brunswick and, and Industry. And we were so glad to have her along that day. And of course, you know, nothing's ever complete without some nice spices and extra things along the way. So there's those beautiful potato scallops that I just did a few weeks ago. That was the 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 repeat. And then I'd like to say thanks to Colin because uh, they made sure that we definitely were finishing this year off with some wonderful seafood and um, some um, unbelievable dishes that were made. And I can't remember if that's the last one or not. It might be. So there's a little, just a little walkthrough. So many recipes uh, that we have enjoyed. So from our kitchens to yours, 
Oh, mom showed mom, mom show me off for a new watch. So beautiful. She a new Fitbit. Absolutely so, beautiful, Ellen. <laughs> yeah. She's excited. Lovely. She's cracking what's going on and everything. So we're going to go enjoy a little breakfast. And um, we really much look forward to seeing you next year. Always have some fun with that, right? January 2nd, next Sunday. And we're going to have some tremendous new recipes and some exciting things. And um, again, we look forward to having each and every one of you join us. And please invite your friends, share out what's going on. We are live on YouTube. So hello to the people on YouTube that are joining us that way. Um, they don't necessarily get a chance to interact, but we love everybody that comes in on Zoom. Richard, I love how festive you're looking with your East Coast lifestyle t-shirt, your Santa hat. <laughs> any final well wishes as we say goodbye to our all of our cooks? Or any yes, I'd like to say, Michelle, thank you so thank you. much for a wonderful year. I don't think many of us could have gotten through it without your help. And uh, I just want to say how much, how very, very much is appreciated. And uh, wish you all of you with a very, very happy new year. I'm looking forward to seeing you next year. 2022. Thank you, Maureen. We agree. It has been nice in a weird year to hang out with you every Sunday. Richard, please. Oh, I can't top that, but thank you very much. So, so, again, Jacqueline said what my mom said. Fantastic. Um, happy, Merry Christmas, everyone. Um, I'm, I'm having a um, my breakfast which is a triple decker egg sandwich which is going to be delicious and and my coffee with this is the cream cabot trail cream <laughs> oh. very nice what you can do on christmas be, like you're not driving anywhere <laughs> i'll be having a universal drink with you there richard <laughs> there you go oh that's really great this is the one we were saying from ironwork that I wanted to get. I think I still have the empty bottle. Yeah, I need to get some ironwork maple cream again. I had gotten one of those and then I'm out. So that'll be on the next one. Would anybody else like to share oh, anything good. before we log out today and say we're looking forward to next week? We're good. It's super dear. Just kind of thinking about it. Me, John. Happy New Year, all. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year to everybody. We'll see Pleasure. you next Sunday. Let's hope for some snow. Yeah. Jones is here, everybody. So now you're seeing the authentic Atlantic Canadians come I'm out. I'm talking to you. <laughs> yeah. There are many of us that do wish for snow. We're, we brought snowmobiling to our lives. Yeah. On the snow and Joan. There you go, Richard. Yeah. And Joan likes to ski. That's just, he needs just, enough. Enough. That's just the right amount. I'm happy with that. <laughs> I'm happy with this. I don't need any more. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Let me see if I can unhook you here. What's that? Oh, there's the sunshine. At least they can prove how sunny it is here. I don't know how far I'll go up my door right now because it is really cold. But whoo, there you go. There's the snow that we still have in New Brunswick. Oh, that's enough. That's, that's yeah, perfect not amount. Not. You can still see that's a little bit of my neck there. That's beautiful. It's chilly. <laughs> but that's it's okay. Brown, it's brown and garnet settlement. Yeah, well, you know what? It's so, Mildred, you, you, know, you have to show us your window. Are you, you're in Dubai. Show us your window. Right? Or are you in Morocco? No, you go. Where? Morocco. Morocco. Oh. Can you show us your window? Over here too. But we don't have a snow. But we don't have snow in here. Like in the next two months, <laughs> a lot of town is in Morocco. It's called Midas. It has a lot of snow. Sometimes it's called till twenty centimeters. Oh. Yeah. Very good. Very good. That does happen here sometimes. Yeah, but it, it doesn't go like a minus three like that. No. Well, that's all right. <laughs> all right, everybody.
Thank you. We're going to say goodbye to our YouTubers and thank you all. And we will see you next Sunday. Please have a safe and enjoyable, eat well, celebrate lots as you go into this new holiday season. Please be safe and um, warm wishes to each and every one of you from our kitchens to yours. Thank you. Goodbye. Have a good time. Bye, everybody. Bye. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. See you next year. Yeah. I think. <laughs> Recording stopped.